In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and go over the build process for my electrical trainer. If you have some questions on what is an electrical trainer or why I built it a certain way or you have some questions, I have another video that's really more of an overview video that explains some of the more nitty gritty details, but this one is pretty much just a fab video. So sit back, relax, uh, hope you enjoy it. So we're gonna start out by building the frame in the back panel. Okay, so I got the frame set up straight so that it's got the legs or the, I guess the cross members that kind of hold it up. It's not really legs, I guess. Um, and I just go ahead, I'm gonna go through, square them up and tack them in. And then I'm gonna make sure it sits right by itself and then I'm gonna weld it out. So now I'm gonna grind up all of the welds that kind of wear this butts together. That way I can put my back panel on and it'll sit nice and flat. And then I'll go around, clamp it on there and tack it up. So even on a project like this, I think it's super important to actually go through and lay out all of your tacks. Cause what I'm gonna do is go around this edge and just put some like half inch tacks to hold it on there. But I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna lay them all out, I'm gonna measure them, make sure it all looks nice and uniform. I hate it when people go through and they put all their tacks all over the place just to hold it on there, but it just, it really cleans it up, makes it look really professional. Okay, so the frame is pretty much done. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cap these ends. I always worry about if you like were to brush by it and catch the corner. Even if I kind of rounded it, it could kind of take a big chunk out of your skin. So what I did is I cut some extra or these little tabs and they're just gonna go on to the face here, weld around them. Now, when I put these tabs in, I'm going to orient them to actually be a little bit longer than, the, or I guess go down further than the bottom of the pipe. That way they'll kind of be like some little legs. That way if it like, I end up putting it on a table that's uneven or maybe it has to span something, I, it can just sit on these little legs. And then even if it is out of uh, whack or whatever, where it's not sitting flat, I could go in here and actually add weld to the bottom very easily and use it to kind of level it out. Okay, so the basic training board is done. And honestly, I built a lot of them that were just, this was the end. But now what I'm gonna do is I wanna mount a motor to mine down here, and I wanna do a power disconnect. So that way, as I'm working on stuff, I can disconnect it, be working on the electrical, and then reconnect it, and everything's all powered up. So we'll start with the motor here. That way, once I get the actual motor mount done, I can have the motor, and then I know the correct height for my power disconnect. Okay, so the frame itself is done. I've got the motor mount done. I've got the disconnect switch mounted up. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna quickly wire wheel everything off, pull that switch off here, and we're just gonna paint it up. I've got my, um, my DIN rail and I've got my wire ducting here behind me, and I'm gonna go ahead and start putting up here and just kind of laying out. Originally when I made this board or I started designing this board, 
I went ahead and I just did it the length of the actual dead rail itself, thinking that would just make my life super easy. But as time has gone on, I've decided I wanna do a section over here for a power circuit. That way it'll be just hard mounted. So I got my, my contactors right here, I got two of them. So that way I can do a reversing setup over here. And I'm gonna give it some room just in case I wanted to put like a third contactor. I'm, I don't know what kind of processes I might come up with that I wanna have that added onto. So I'm gonna go ahead and tip this thing on its back, take all my components, just kind of lay them out and then start cutting all my wire ducting and my den rail to however I like it. So I went ahead and just cut everything out. It's pretty quick to actually cut all this stuff out and get it all laid out. I think it maybe took me 20 minutes. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mount the outer ring, make all of my measurements for the inner stuff based off of those so that way I can make sure everything looks centered and nice. And then at that point, I just gotta cut the covers or the tops to the wire ducts and then I'm all done. Got all my uh, DIN rail and wire ducting mounted down. Went ahead and just uh, double checked that these transformers fit in there nicely. All I have left to do before I flip it up on its face and go ahead and mount the motor and uh, the disconnect switch is I'm gonna mount my transformer right here. Uh, the reason I am mounting the transformer to the actual back panel instead of actually having it attach to all of my DIN rail is I've done that before and it just, it's really, really heavy. So when you have students or when you go ahead and you're trying to wire it up, every time you try to like, uh, you know, spin those bolts or those nuts, it wants to pop off. Um, so this time I decided just to mount it right to the back panel. Also, I believe that having it in a central location is smart. All of my other components will be easily able to move around, but I wanted that kind of right there central. So gonna, uh, so I got that mounted down and then I have to do the covers to my wire duct, which honestly is the one part you wanna try to be a little bit precise about and make look nice and clean because your overall finished product will look very nice if all of your cuts are nice and straight on all of your covers. So go ahead and get that done, then I'll move on. Now I'm gonna leave these wires a little bit long in case I wanna come in here and add a breaker and I'll just put my breaker right here next to the switch. Um, this would be just a good idea if you have like students working on this trainer and you accidentally direct grounded it or something like that. It's, you know, usually I just use like a one or two amp breaker there and it seems to protect a lot of my transformers and stuff from students. Again, I'm gonna leave these a hair long too, just in case I ever need to put that uh, breaker in there. And that's it for our disconnect switch. Now you can pretty much see that all it is is we've got our, our grounds hooked over here and we have our L1 and our L2 just going through the switch. So that way I can disconnect all of the power when I'm working on the trainer with one flip of the switch and I know that I'm gonna be safe. Now we're just gonna go ahead and connect the wires coming out of our uh, disconnect switch over here to our distribution block. And then that way, when we go ahead and we start wiring up all of our different stuff, we have like a place for all of our uh, electricity. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in here like such. And if you haven't noticed, all of these terminals are way too big for the wires that I'm using. It's just cause I'm trying to make it as realistic as possible, but we are using 120 volts. So that's what you get. So if you're a teacher or somebody out there trying to put something together, hopefully this helps you and starts giving you some ideas. If you have some questions or have something you want to know about, please write me a comment uh, or send me an email. Love to talk about it. And in a later video, I will probably go over most of the componentry. So if you have some questions on what kind of relays or what transformers I buy and stuff like that, I will have that listed out probably in a different video. But that's all I have for this video. Hope this helps somebody.